Oh, way the jinx is back, baby. It's time to watch some HBO Premium Television. Whew, uh, that's right. We're gonna get. We're gonna go way back at the way back machine, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the second season or part two of the Jinx. The Jinx came out in 2015, and was kind of that that phase of uh, resurgence of true crime. True crime had been really relegated to a bunch of like rando TV shows, but now it, it, you know, obviously there's documentaries all over the place, How to Make a Murderer, all those things that really kind of blew up. Now I did not watch the Jinx when it came out, but I did watch it several years later, and I was like, wow, this is really awesome. And long story short, the Jinx is about Robert Durst, who is a the son of a real estate magnate in New York, who very, very, very wealthy family, and he kind of just like owns some buildings and kind of freeloads, and it's had a weird checkered career, like past. Well, what ends up happening is they make there's a director who makes a movie about loosely based around his life back in the old days called All Good Things starring Ryan Gosling and Kristen not Kristen Stewart Kirsten Dunst sorry and that wasn't like that big of a hit but anyway several years later he's like oh I'd like to catch up on Robert Durst and see what his opinion on things is so he starts interviewing Robert Durst and the whole thing stems around his his wife went missing many 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 years like ago back in like the 70s or something like that I think and then his his like supposed best friend ended up shot dead and then he ended up in like Galveston, Texas and he chopped up his roommate and he killed his roommate and chopped him up and he was acquitted of the th of the third crime and the other two have re remained shrouded in mystery. So long story short, if you haven't seen the jinx, you should watch season 1. So that way you get caught up because there's a giant revelation at the end of it and this is directly related to it. So I've always had a soft spot in my heart and it's totally random. Like they didn't expect him to do anything. They were just kind of, they, they saw some weird evidence that they wanted to find out what was going on. So here we we catch up, uh, you know, nine years later and I guess they have more story to tell. So... If you like this type of content, by the way, I am the man you may know as E from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And we have a podcast, which you can check out. We live stream it here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights, 7.30 p.m. And we can also rumble, iTunes, all those other great places. But let's, let's get into the story because I saw episode one and I'm back in it, baby. Back in it. I don't know what kind of revelations they're going to have this time, but they're pretty bananas what they've got so far. Apparently, the Jinx team did not discover his confession for 26 months. And the way that things went down is the day before the finale of the first season was released, they picked up Robert Durst in New Orleans in a hotel. He's like a 70-something-year-old man at this point, and they, they nabbed him. Well, not only some of the revolutions from this are that they nabbed him, but he was on his way to... <laughs> to Cuba, apparently, with a lot of cash and an old man mask. He was just going to cruise on into Cuba and flee the country. So, yeah, that's pretty good. So the director, Andrew Jarecki, he's the one who directed that original movie and then directed the, J the Jinx Part 1. So now they're picking back up, not missing a beat, apparently. And this is pretty cool. So his actually, his wife was... She went. She disappeared in 1982, so not quite the 70s. And the 2000 murder of Susan Berman, and they're they're connected. One of the other there's there's like an there's a bunch of wild like you couldn't write this. It's so bananas what happens in this. You, you couldn't even write it. And like I said, this is completely. They didn't go about trying to solve these crimes. They thought they could just get them to answer some questions and react to some things. But they had no idea that they'd have any material 
that they could co potentially convict him on. So what they did was they sent all this this uh, information that they got from the documentary to the police, and then the police were like, okay, episode six is going to land. We got to get this guy. So they came and pick him up, and they go through the whole story of that. One of the, one of the wildest re revelations, though, is that a juror from his 2000... No, from, when, when, when did he kill that other guy? His roommate. He killed his roommate, Morris Black... I guess that was around 2000 as well. <laughs> he was acquitted of that, but one of the jurors who helped acquit him became his friend. And then when he was going about to go on the lam, his friend, whose girlfriend or wife happens to be his maid, went into his room and cleaned out everything. All his computers, everything. What kind of nonsense is all this? They have all the tapes of him from being in jail. So it's just a fascinating... Reveal one of the most riveting parts of the end of season one is the they have film footage of the the families of the victims watching the series one episode six finale and them reacting to it in real time and it was bananas <laughs> like he, he's like the director's like I ha I'd like to invite you all over to my house we'll have a nice little party we'll watch the last episode there's something in it I think you guys should see and it was just it was mind blowing this, this guy knows how to direct. Really, really good director. Really good stuff here. I highly recommend it. 10 out of 10 for crime. 10 out of 10 for potential murder. And just wow. It is just, it's just wild. And like I said, I don't think they even knew what they had when they, when they had him on and all the different reactions they were going for. And I, st I still haven't seen him <laughs> for all good things. So... Because that's what he really did. What happened is uh, apparently Robert Durst saw the movie All Good Things and was like, I'd like to talk to you. Can I interview you about that? And then that's where it came from. And the jinx comes from himself. He's a self-appointed jinx. He did not want to have any kids because he was afraid of passing the jinx curse on to the kids. And it's just bananas. The whole thing is wild. You could not write any of this. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, this guy's like, I've been in a rabbit hole for tw the directors. I've been in a rabbit hole for 21 years following this Robert Durst story. And I can't get away from it. You know, it's it's kind of incredible. And uh, I can't, t again, I'm, I'm riveted. I'm back in. And I remember a friend told me, and, and I don't think I, I, I might have seen it way, way like I said, way later, because I, I didn't know about it. It's kind of like when you catch on to Breaking Bad, and you're like, somebody's like, you gotta watch Breaking Bad. It's the best thing on television. And then somebody says to you, oh, you gotta, if you like, you gonna this is gonna get you into true crime, which it did. You gotta watch the jinx. It'll get you into true crime. Some people recommend it, Making a Murderer, which is crap. But this, this is uh, Chef's Kiss. Mwah! I highly recommend it if you like true crime. It's back on the air. I don't know how many episodes. I guess it's six more episodes, but it's bananas already. It's one of the most incredible. <laughs> Could you imagine seeing an old man wearing an old man mask? What a better disguise. I mean, 10 out of 10 for the disguises as well. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. If you want to talk about it, if you want to do a little bit of a deeper breakdown, I don't want to spoil too much for everybody, just in case this is your first catch of the jinx and you wanted to go back and watch it or if you wanted to discuss it, Let's get it on. Let's bring it on. Like and subscribe. Share. Join the channel. And thank you for checking us out. But I'm on to the next one.